So with the end of the season fast approaching, the WTA Finals are now set after the, one of the final weeks of the Asian Swing. Of course, the WTA Finals start in a couple of weeks. The ADB Finals also starting soon, but no new players have qualified. Let's go have a look at who actually played last week, though, because we actually had some really interesting events. I'll start on the WTA side of things. Starting in Ningbo, a WTA 500 event. Kazakina beating Andreva in the final 6-love, 4-6, four, 6-4 six, six, four, to lift another trophy this season. And over in Osaka in the Japan Open, Lemens takes out Birrell, 6-love, six, 6-4 six, in the final of that event as well. So a much smaller event with lesser known own names, but 250 points is a lot, especially for those players outside the top 50. Over on the men's side of things, we had three 250 events, starting at Old Matty with Hashinov taking out Diallo in the final, 6-2-5-7-6-3. In Antwerp, we had Batista Agu taking out Lehechka, 7-5-6-1 in the final. And in Stockholm, Tommy Pohl goes back-to-back, -back, beating Dimitrov in the final, 6-4-6-3, and he put himself in the race of the finals with that win as well. So, massive points boost for Tommy Pohl and Dimitrov in that final, ahead of the AW finals in a few weeks. All right, so a little bit of a new segment for the ranking show. We're going to go through the career high rankings of players that are outside the top 10, but inside the top 100. Starting on the WTA side, Miron Draver. She's at number 16 in the world, which surpasses her career high at number 19. She's gone up three spots after making the final in Nimbo. Avanesian, she goes up to number 46 in the world, which is a career high for her. Shrimkova has also gone up to a career high number 51 in the world. Uchiima has also gone to 57 in the world, which is a career high. Rakamova goes up to 61. Lemens, who actually won a tournament last week, she goes up to number 88 in the world and cartel goes up to 92 in the world all career highs for those ladies in that top 100 over on the men's side of things draper he goes up to a career high number 18 in the world shung he goes up to number 47 in the world bergs has also gone up to a career high ranking this week at number 65 muller he's also gone up to number 68 in the world diallo he goes up to number 87 in the world after making the final of a 250 event last week and fernley he goes up to 92 in the world after having a solid week coming through the qualifiers of stockholm and making it to the round of 16 so they have it. Those are the career high rankings for the players that are outside the top 10, but inside the top 100 for this week for both the men and the women. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings now. And Arena Sabalenka takes back top spot over Iga Fiontech, which is huge news going into the WTA finals in a few weeks' time. I think we can all agree that Sabalenka over the last 12 months consistently has been up the top. She's also won two Grand Slams over the last 12 months as Fiontech's won. So big news there. Fiontech going down number two for the first time in almost a year. Goff will be at three with Pagula at four, but back in her at five and Paolini at six. Zhang at number seven, Navarro at eight. And Daniel Collins, she drops out of the top 10, making way for Kazakina, who went up two spots into that number nine spot. And Adaj Maya stays at number 10 for this week. But huge news with the top of the ranking change. And there's still some points for Sviantec to lose going into the WTA finals in a couple of weeks' time. So it's going to be very tough for Sviantec to take back top spot unless Sabalenka has a terrible WTA finals campaign. All right, let's look at the WTA race, the finals now. And this will be probably the final week we go through it because it's set with Zhang taking the final spot qualifying even though she didn't play last week in fact none of the players played last week and most of these players are not playing for the next few weeks because they're all getting ready for the WTA finals and as it stands we've got Sabalenka, Sviantek, Goff and Perlini in at the top four Rabakina at five Pagula at six Zhang at seven now Navarro is number eight she will be the first alternate at this stage a little bit of a change though down the bottom with Kazakina going up one spot to number nine pushing Collins out of that alternate spot and of course Krajikova she qualifies due to the Grand Slam rule so even though Kazakina and Navarro are not qualified, there are players in that top eight, such as Rabakina, who haven't played for a long time, that could withdraw. And of course, you never know what could happen over the next few weeks. So being an alternate could still get you into the uh, WTA Finals. So really important for those players to get those points. And also Dasher is playing next week. So she could, in fact, be the first alternate if she does win a few more points and overtakes Navarro. Over on the men's side of things now, and no change at the top with Sinner at number one, Elker is at number two, Zverev at three, and Djokovic at four, Medvedev at five with Fritz at six, Rublev at seven, Rude at eight. But we did have a change on the bottom. With Dimitro making the final of Stockholm, he goes up one spot to number nine. Pushing Diminor down to number 10 to round out the top 10 for this week. But a lot of the bottom half of the top 10 are actually playing this week in Vienna and in Basel. So there could be a little bit more changes down the bottom half. And as Zverev does win Vienna, he will close the gap between him and Alcaraz at number two, which is going to be huge for Zverev because if he is number two going into the ADB finals, it means he avoids Sinner. And that's probably the guy that you most want to avoid at this stage. Having a look at the race of the finals now and still no one else qualified with the only three guys being Sinner at number one. Alcaraz at two and Zverev at three. Medvedev's at four, but he's not too far away. He's probably 
probably only maybe one or two matches away from being qualified. You got Fritz at five, Djokovic at six, Rude at number seven, Rublev at eight, Dimonor at nine, and Tommy Paul. He actually jumps back into the top 10, pushing Dimitrov out after winning in Stockholm, and he actually beat Dimitrov in the finals. So really, really close between those two guys. But Tommy Paul puts himself in that number 10 spot, which keeps him within reach of that top eight. And like I said, over the next few weeks, we've got two weeks left of the season for the men, or three weeks, if you include the week after Paris. Expect a lot of these players to start qualifying, especially Medvedev and Fritz over the next week or so. So there you have it. Nothing really to report in terms of the ATP side of things. No one really played last week. But we do have a lot of players that are playing next week. And it's going to be really interesting to see who actually starts qualifying for the ATP finals. There's five spots left off for grabs. And there's two weeks left, or three weeks left, of the season. On the women's side, it's all locked in. We've got the WTF finals coming in a few weeks. Let me know down in the comments below. What's your early prediction for the WTF finals? Is it Sabalenka? Is she the obvious pick? Do you think Sviantec with the new coach can maybe win the WTA Finals back-to-back? -back? But there it is. They are the rankings for this week. No major change at the top, but we're getting serious towards the end of the season.